Today we are looking at a supposed gem of the small form factor cooling world. Meet Alpenfuss approach to get as much cooling power into a sub 50mm high cooler as possible. Or as I will call it, is there even a fan? This is the Alpenfön Black Ridge, a both tiny and huge small form factor cooler measuring only 47mm in height out of the box. The cooler was originally designed in a partnership between Alpenfön and Dan, the, the case company, and knowing how the cooler works and how it's designed to fit into the case, many decisions that Alpenfön made during all of this make a lot of sense. But before we get into any specifics, let's go over the standard stuff, you know, like out of the box. Ooh, that transition. Out of the box, the Black Ridge comes in a neat packaging where every screw got its own little spot in the styrofoam. Yes, yes, very, very satisfying. On the compatibility side of things, the Black Ridge can be installed on top of an AM4 socket on AMD's side. And on every LGA1150 and 1200 on Team Int. As for now, I'm not aware of any LGA1700 upgrade kits, but who knows. But while we're at it, let's go over the installation. The installation procedure for both AMD and Intel are surprisingly similar. We need to rotate the cooler and install the brackets onto the base. The ones engraved with AMD for AMD and who would have thought the other ones for Intel. Both brackets need to be installed in an outwards pointing orientation with the ends pointing away from the base and screwed in using the tiny screws that were so neatly packaged up. From there, on both platforms, position the cooler with the heat pipes coming out at the top of the motherboard and screw it down from behind it using the bigger screws. The reason you want to have the heat pipes be at the top is that the cooler is not symmetrical. This would then create major issues on the RAM side or even worse, on the VRM heatsink portion. Okay, with the general stuff out of the way, let's get to that insane amount amount of use cases or mini customizabilities that Alpenfun built right into this puppy. For the heat transfer, Alpenfun made use of a pretty big copper base with six heat pipes shaped in a C shape and connected to the enormous black painted heatsink. And this basically also covers the design aspect of the cooler, like everything you are able to see is that big ass black heatsink. More impressively is the fact that compared to any other let's call it ultra SFF cooler, Alpenfun's Black Ridge has by far the biggest amount of, of heatsink area and most heat pipes. But this also comes at a very significant cost. Being built as it is, the Alpenfun Black Ridge managed to keep the overall height at 47 mm. That's a full centimeter smaller than the Scythe Shuriken 2. Pretty damn impressive. But having that huge heatsink on the top means that part of the fins are going completely over the RAM slot. Basically crippling down the max RAM height to 33mm or in other words in a bare stick of RAM. Now before you might think this is some design flaw, this is actually the good end of the stick. The fan used on the Black Ridge is an Alpenfun in-house made 92mm wide and long and 50mm thick mini air blaster capable of spinning at up to 2800 rpm while pushing around 47 CFM and being controlled by PVM. This little air horn is installed on the bottom side of the heatsink pushing the air up through the heatsink. The fan can simply be removed by unscrewing the four fan screws that are keeping it attached to the heatsink. The reason why I said this would be the good end of the stick is the fact that the fan is only 92mm wide, which even then allows standardized RAM sizes like 33mm to be installed. Inside the packaging we will also find two sets of fan clips. One of them can theoretically be used to replace the existing fan with a 120mm wide 50mm thick fan covering all of the heatsink's bottom side and creating that performance mode. Now of course this would mean a huge performance win but at the same time this would also severely cripple the supported RAM size to something called VLP, very low profile. And yes, I, I believe we can all agree that this just looks wrong. Unfortunately, I do not own any VLP RAM, so we will just need to use our imagination on this part. But if you don't want to use a 120mm fan on the bottom side, basically creating the RAM version of our friend over at TLC, we can also use the fan clips to mount a 120mm 
mm, 50 mm thick fat on the top side of the cooler. This allows us to keep using the heatsink less 33 mm high RAM while enjoying much better cooling. This, of course, then also hits the cooler a bit in terms of height. Um, at this point, we will be looking at around 62 mm, which is still very ultra small form factor, but it is significantly bigger. But if this is still enough and you can spare 72 mm in height for a cooler, we can also go all in and slap a full 25 mm thick monster fan on there, creating an ultra overclocking mode. Like, like that's a world that exists. But to end the RAM section, uh, you will never be able to go above 33 mm in, in height. No matter how you turn it, twist it, whatever fan you put on there, 33 mm, it is RAM restrictive, period. Now, before we get to the benchmark section, I did try to use the Black Ridge on a usual test bench. Unfortunately, with that tiny 92mm fan, it did not manage to finish the test, even at full blast. But that was pretty foreseeable. I mean, this is a 3900X and this is a 92mm fan. But in the end, this just meant that I needed to use our Ultra SFF bench setup using a 10700K to test this puppy. On a second note, I do not own a 15 or nor 25mm thick Alpenfön fan, and this means that for the part where I'll be, we'll be checking out how far you can upgrade the cooler, we uh, will be using my Noxia fans, because that's just how it needs to be. Anyway, in its original state, with that tiny 92mm fan, the Blackridge managed to keep the 10700K at 61 degrees C above ambient. Yikes. You might think that this result isn't that bad, after all it's just as good as a Noctua NHL9i, which also uses a 92mm fan, but don't forget that the that heatsink to heatsink, these two are nowhere, nowhere near the same level. Knowing how these two compare optically makes this kind of ridiculous. But things do not get any better from here. Comparing our results after noise normalizing them, we can see that temperature-wise, the Noctua and the Alpenfilm Black Ridge are basically equal. The Black Ridge is just offset by about 5 dB at every step. Overall, this is really not a good result, not at all. Considering the huge heatsink and, and six bloody heat pipes on here, I've expected more, much, much more. But there is something that is causing this, this fan. Now, I believe that this little 92mm big fan is the very reason why the Black Ridge turned out that bad. And I can kind of prove it. After removing the mini fan and installing one of our Noctua NF-A12X15s on top of the heatsink, because I still do not own any VLP RAM, we did re-benchmark everything. This time the Black Ridge completely annihilated every other Ultra SFF cooler in our benchmarks and kept the 10700K at 45 degrees C above ambient. That's 16 degrees difference. In what world is 60 degrees C difference explainable? If it would have been 4, 5 degrees, I would be okay. I mean, its original fan is 92 versus 120. That can make a 4 or 5 degrees C difference. No problem there. But 60, that just shows me that the original 92mm fan is just bad. Really bad. Or something just doesn't work right. No matter how you twist it, 16 is way too much. Going over to noise to performance, it really doesn't get much better here. While the original Black Ridge marked the very end of our list, the new and improved Noctua infused Alpenfön laughs at every other cooler out there, while it keeps the 10700K cooler than anybody else while keeping it overall quieter than anybody else. This is just insane. Now, before we call this a day, we also slap one of our Noctua NF-A12X25s on there, basically creating the big daddy of small four-factor coolers. While being in its Ultra Instinct mode, the Black Ridge managed to keep the temp down another degree C, so probably reaching the heat heatsink's maximum capacity at this point. But over on the noise side, we can see how much of an improvement this actually was. Being barely noticeable at full blast, the Big Black Daddy Ridge managed to hit noise floor almost instantly and just stayed there just for the fun of beating everybody's ass. 
Pretty that that was kind of a wild ride. So where does this leave us? Well, I, I'm so inconcisive about this cooler. Usually with my reviews, I try to ignore any type of potential upgrade of a cooler because I just try to stick to an out-of-box experience as close as I can. But the Black Ridge kind of mixed everything up here. On one side, I really like it. The quality is outstanding, the installation method is very, very easy, and I love the fact that I can install the cooler without removing a single fan. And it looks really nice. On the other hand, no matter how you look at it, 33mm RAM restriction is pretty hard and I do not even count this as a useful option in 99.9% .9 of use cases out there. But the major drawback of the Black Ridge is really really bad performance, or in other words, this fan. After having the cooler for a couple of weeks now, I, I do absolutely not recommend to get it as an out of the box cooler. Looking at the benchmarks, this is just bad, and knowing that this is smaller, has better RAM compatibility and performs a lot better, I do not see any reason why to recommend a Black Ridge over a Shuriken 2 in any way. But if you are okay with going with up to 33mm high RAM and you can fit a up to 62mm high cooler in there, I believe that, that this is an insane cooler. Of course you will need to get out of your way and get an additional NFA12 X15 fan for the cooler that you already purchased, adding to the total cost. But looking at those benchmarks, this is absolutely worth it if you have the space. On the price side, the Black Ridge is going for around 42 euros, while adding an NFA 12X15 would get that price up to around 62. Which makes me realize right now that it is 62mm high and it costs 62 euros. What a coincidence. So to buy or not to buy? Just as a cooler? Absolutely not. Tuning with an Oxia fan? Oh, oh yes. And this also segues into the could have been better section. The heatsink installation and all of that is perfectly fine, just that fan is kinda bad and it is in dire need of replacement to not end up at the bottom of a benchmark list. And this should be all for the Alpen Film Black Ridge. I hope you enjoyed it, but if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Alpenfern Broken 3. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join and, and talk about random stuff, use the link in the description below and join us. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.